Hey guys, I wanted to make a video about tri-state input output uh, for the FPGA. Um, I figured the best way to do that is, is over a project I've already done. Um, and this was using the uh, IR sensor, the QRE1113. So we'll kind of go over how the tri-state works and also give a kind of an example program. Uh, and I'll give you the code for that program below. This kind of actually was a, a difficult uh, idea for me for a long time, the tri-state thing. And this was the actual project that I uh, used to figure it out. Um, so I figured it'd be a great starting point for you guys. So this is the QRE1113 sensor. Uh, this actually comes out on a break on a breakout board. Um, you can buy the sensor itself, but it's best to just buy the breakout board. Uh, the circuit diagram you'll see uh, next will, will show basically just what's on this breakout board. Uh, so you basically just have to give it power, VCC, uh, ground, and then you have this out, which is an input-output pin, right? So you have to trigger the device, and then you listen to the device. So here's the actual circuit for the device. Um, these guys are tied up to VCC. You have a resistor that uh, limits the current for this diode, so it can just continue to put out its IR. Uh, and then you have a capacitor up here, which holds the charge. So this capacitor up here will stay charged until you basically... Uh, pull this line up to the, the voltage of VCC. So when you pull this line up to the voltage of VCC, it takes both these plates to the same voltage, which actually discharges the capacitor. Uh, then uh, you're, you're sitting discharged, and whatever light this guy is seeing will allow this to charge at the rate at which this is turned on. Uh, I know it's kind of a backwards backwards idea there, but you want to see how long it takes for this to charge. However long it takes for this to charge is how much light is on the actual transistor there. Um, so here's the actual the breakout board diagram. Uh, you're just tying up to VCC. You're either tapping this line or listening to this line uh, to see you know what the actual IR sensor is seeing, and then you just tie the thing to ground. So this is kind of the uh, just to show you kind of how the IR sensor is hooked up to the the FPGA and the tri-state part of that, right? So this is the IR sensor as we just showed. It's got the VCC, the trigger echo line, which is out, and then the ground line. Uh, we're going into the FPGA with this on this in-out J3 pin, right? So we made this J3 pin an actual in-out pin, right? Uh, now behind that pin, we had to do some logic to be able to make this thing work as an input and an output. Uh, this logic is right here. Um, we'll see in the code here a little bit later. Uh, how that kind of works, but basically you just have an enable pin, which either enables or disables this output, uh, and then you're always listening on this other on this other pin here, which is actually the same pin but on this other line. So it's pretty easy here. If uh, signal input output is equal to enable or not enable in this case, then it's then you're going to assign signal I/O to charge. Otherwise, you're going to assign signal I/O to one BZ, which is just the uh, high impedance state, right? So this is this is actually a, a, a diagram, a flow diagram for the program that we used for this uh, IR sensor project. Um, so we'll kind of quickly go through this. Uh, you've got your start, you know, you start out here, you're always gonna use a counter as we always do with these programs. Uh, then you have a reset button. Uh, our reset button, if, it, uh, if it's reset, then we're resetting our laps. Um, so if you're holding down a reset button, It'll set our laps back to zero. Otherwise, uh, we're going to do a not and on count 22 down to 9. If not and is 1, then we're going to enable the charge. Otherwise, we're just going to move on and count the discharge, right? So how long does this thing take to discharge? Um, now, for this actual program, we did a calibration because we wanted to be able to take uh, different things and put it in front of the IR sensor and be able to trigger off of those things. So whether it be white tape, like in this example, or, uh, you know, a gray tape or a silver tape or something like that, right? Uh, so if the calibration button was pushed, then we're going to basically make a variable, um, a calibration variable, and we're going to say discharge count equals that calibration variable. So we'll take whatever it is we're wanting to measure, we'll put it in front of that, we'll hit the, the calibration button, and it'll calibrate the it'll calibrate the calibration variable to whatever that material was, and it'll start back over in this loop again. If the calibration button wasn't hit, then we're going to go down and we're going to check and see, does our discharge count, is that less than calibration variable? If it is less than calibration variable, then we must have had a lap, which is what we were doing with this, and we're going to increase our lap count. Um, if it wasn't less than calvar, then we're going to check and say, 
are there three lap counts? If there are three lap counts, we're going to shut this whole thing down. And that was the idea in this project. If you count this three times, stop everything. Uh, if there's not, then we're going to loop back to start and start this whole thing over again. Uh, pretty simple program. The actual code that I'm going to provide on my GitHub and it's linked down below um, will be uh, over this actual flow chart, right? Um, so, so um, this is this is actually uh, from the hardware perspective. This is kind of what you see from the actual sensor uh, when you're when you're tapping it every time. So you allow it to charge, then it discharges. Then you you know you allow it to charge and discharge, allow it to charge and discharge. And what you're doing is counting the the distance between the front edge of this wave and the back edge of this wave at a certain point, which is basically just a hysteresis point on the uh, on the FPGA in this case, right? So as you move things in and out, or or put uh, more reflective or less reflective uh, things in front of the sensor, uh, it's going to get thicker and thinner. You can see it got thicker over here and thinner over here. So this is uh, over the actual program. This is what uh, was measured on my O-scope uh, to show like how that program was working, right? And this is kind of like a one lap count sort of thing. So as we're coming along, we're going along and uh, the discharge count is really slow. There's not a whole lot reflecting, right? Not a whole lot turning that, that actual transistor on to drain that current out. Um, so the, the, uh, the waves are kind of thick here and you can see that's what we're seeing here. This is the actual digital version uh, within the FPGA of what you're seeing down here. Uh, and the, it's kind of a thick uh, wave, uh, high duty cycle, if you will, going through until you get to where this, this wave thins out a lot. And once this wave thins out to a certain point, then it sets off this trigger and says, go ahead and count a lap now, right? So that's the basic idea behind the program that uh, I'm going to share down below on my GitHub account and the actual flow chart that's, uh, that's in this presentation. So let's go look at the code real quick. Just give you a quick run over on the code and uh, that way you won't be totally lost. If you want more of a detailed look, I can do that. Um, just let me know below. And also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Um, so this is kind of the quick, quick rundown of this code. Uh, we've got our inputs and our outputs. We're gonna input a clock, input the calibration button, the reset button, the signal IO is an in out as you see here. Uh, we're going to output the finished state, uh, and then we're going to output a charge, right? So the signal I.O. is going to be where you're going to pull in that signal, and then you're going to have to output an actual charge, right? So we'll go into this. Uh, we've got a wire that's pulsed. we got some registers. Uh, you got enable, old enable, count, charge. We'll kind of see what all these are as we go through the code. Uh, pulse count, hold count, cal count, lap, finish. And then we're going to initially set everything to zero because it always floats and you never know what it is. Uh, except for one, we're going to, or except for finish, we're going to set that to one and we're going to check if it's zero, right? Uh, this is just kind of the way a lot of this works out. Sometimes the logic, sometimes you have to do reverse logic, uh, one where you would like a zero and a zero where you would like a one, uh, but it just makes it cleaner programmatically, uh, maybe not the way your mind sees it. So here's that, that special statement uh, for that uh, I.O. signal. So basically, if enable is, uh, is in this case, a zero, we're going to set sig I.O. to equal charge. If enable is a one, then we're going to set sig I.O. to equal uh, basically the high impedance state, right? Uh, then outside of that, we're going to set pulse equal to sig I.O. So that's when we're measuring it, right? We want to see how long is this pulse. Uh, then we're going to go into this always loop. Uh, we're going to begin the always loop. Here's your counter. We always try to put our counters up in front of the always loop as long as they're always going to happen every single count, every single clock. Uh, if we get our reset, we're going to set the lap to zero and finish to one. Uh, then we've got an if statement here for count 18 down to 13. This is the same thing that I'd showed before. We just kind of move the variables around to give different charge rates. Uh, you can see here that's 1.28 microsecond charge every 655 microseconds. Um, and at that point, if, if this and count is all ones, then you're going to enable set enable to zero and set charge register to one. Uh, otherwise you're going to set charge register to zero and set enable to one. Uh, then we're going to set the pulse count equal to pulse count minus the pulse, right? And so that's, how, that's us measuring that actual wave. So with this next statement, uh, if in, if enable equals zero and old enable equals one, we're basically checking to say, see if we got a rising edge there. We're going to say that uh, hold count equals the pulse count. Then if enable equals zero and old enable equals zero, which means it's been zero, then we're going to start, we're going to set our pulse count up 
and wait for the next pulse count, right? So we're basically just setting up this buffer full of ones. Then we're going to look for our next pulse count. When it actually pulses, it'll look like zeros moving into this thing, right? So we're just resetting our pulse count for the next time we come around to measure that wave. Uh, this is the calibration button stuff. If the calibration button is enabled, then we're going to set uh, the calibration count to the hold count. I will set the lapse to zero. Um, then if it's not the calibration button, that means we're running through the actual program. Then if enable is zero and old enable is one, that means we get a rising edge on enable. And if hold count is greater than cal count minus six and cal count is less than hold count plus six, just setting up a window there. And if um, still lap is a zero, then we're going to say lap equals lap plus one. So that's basically us just counting saying, oh, hey, we must have seen a tape. We're going to add one to lap. Then we're going to make still lap one uh, because we w basically if we're still moving over that tape, we don't want to recount it every single time. So as long as it stays over the tape and we're not seeing any hysteresis there, uh, we're not seeing it shut off, then uh, we're still going over the tape and this is still the same lap. Uh, we kind of got a, a way to clear that still lap and to turn it to zero after we've passed over the tape. Uh, then we're going to say if the laps equal three, finish equals one, we're outporting that or outputting that. Uh, and then laps, we're going to set that back to zero just in case we wanted to restart this whole thing. Uh, and then so then down here, we've got uh, old enable. We're shuffling that back. Right. So we're filling up this register with old enable. And then we're going to take the new enable and we're going to set that into the very first spot of old enable or that that register bank there. Uh, now, at the very, very end, we're going to set charge is equal to charge register. So that was where we were telling it to charge or not to charge. And then we're going to set our finish state, which is an output to finish so that we can output that to our top module. So guys, if you really like this code and you like the videos that I'm doing, please like and subscribe below. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. If you just want to give me a, hey, how's it going? Uh, you can do that as well. If you dislike my video or want uh, to correct me on something, I mean, I'm wrong on things all the time, then let me know below. Otherwise, uh, have a great day and don't forget to love well.